Welcome to the Raw and Uncensored Ambitious Podcast. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Ah, uh, yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. And on today's episode of the Ambitious Podcast, I'm going to bring it back because we've talked about this before on the podcast, but now I'm going to get even more in your face about it because I am so freaking sick and tired of all of the people around me, including myself, being weird little freak show people pleasers. I'm over it. I'm sick of it. It's not going to get us anywhere. It is not being ambitious. Being a people pleaser is absolutely the opposite of ambitious. And we are going to get into the nitty gritty of people pleasing today. So hopefully, fingers crossed, once and for all, you can stop being a, a little weirdo, a little freak show, and start pleasing your damn self. Because let me tell you right now, when you please your damn self, Everyone else around you is going to be happy because you are the queen. You are the HBIC. So whatever you say and whatever you think and whatever you do probably goes in your domain. So when we stop being people pleasers and we start being selfish because selfish is actually selfless, our entire trajectory of our lives are going to change for the better. But before I begin, I want to do two things. One is I'd like to read a really awesome podcast review over on Apple. That's number one. And then number two, I want to do a little tarot pull, a little witch card tarot pull for everyone because I just like want to set the tone. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes this bitch wants to set the tone. So I'm going to read a really amazing podcast review. And it's from Sabrina LW96. It's a five-star review. Thank you, Sabrina. And it says, as real as it can get, and that's all I got to say. And she says, I love this podcast because I love to hear like the raw, unfiltered truths. I love how unapologetic, fearless, And I loved when she discussed being sovereign because that's not discussed as much when it comes to women, which Sabrina, I freaking agree. I found myself laughing a lot of the podcast because I just love it so much because it's empowering. Listening to this will open your mind, make you fearless and to go accomplish anything you want, regardless of your circumstances. I love her confidence, especially when it comes to finances, which we are going to do um, some more money podcasts. I'm a seven figure earner. I shouldn't be a seven figure earner for where I came from, the old programming, the money blocks, the money mindset and all that happy horse shit. But I have created myself to be a seven figure earner. And one of the podcasts that I want to do is how to be rich. And another podcast that I want to do over the next couple of weeks is why I think that every woman whether they're a stay-at-home mom or they're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, should have some kind of an online business that is digital and is a recurring revenue and is automated and is evergreen and is scalable. That is what I'm going to be teaching. I actually do this already. I'm a very high, high-end business coach, if you will. I take a lot of women who are doing the most and I help them hybridize their companies. And I have a whole company called KB Marketing Solutions um, where I run it with my daughter, Karina, and she does all the technical work and I do all the creative work. And I just really believe in my heart of hearts that every woman in the world should be wealthy and should have the triple threat of freedom, which is financial freedom and time freedom and location freedom. And no matter what happens going forward in this crazy world that we live in, we are going to, as women, be able to not lose our shit, to be affluent, to be abundant, and to be able to make sovereign autonomous choices about ourselves and our children and our family. And that is part of my purpose and my mission. So I will be doing some podcasts coming up about money. So Sabrina, stay tuned. And Sabrina, if you're listening to this podcast, hit me up, 
reach out to me at help at kbmsc.com so I can get your shipping address and I can send you a beautiful uh, gift as a token of my appreciation and thank you from the bottom of my little black heart because you know I know all of you out there in Ambitious Land are busy bitches. You don't have to come onto these platforms and give reviews, but you do and I appreciate it because the more that you review it, even though it really doesn't help me get in more people's faces, when people do actually find the Ambitious Podcast and they see that it has great reviews and such high star ratings, they're more apt to listen. And the more women that are apt to listen to the podcast, we're only going to create such a bigger community globally. So thank you, Sabrina. And if you would be ever so kind, go to wherever you consume your podcast where you can leave reviews and leave us a five star and written review. And if you do, I will read your review on the Ambitious podcast and the upcoming episodes and I will definitely be hitting you up or you can be hitting me up and giving me your shipping address so I can send you a beautiful gift. So thank you very, very, very much. It means the world to me that you guys do this. Okay. The second thing we're going to do today is I'm going to use my incredible tarot cards. You can get these on kbmfc.com. And these are like the most amazing cards I've ever had in my life. Um, I do these on Tarot Tuesday on my Ambitious app. If you haven't joined the Ambitious app yet, what the hell are you waiting for? That's where the magic happens. It's the most incredible community. The education over there is bar none. No one in the motivational educational space in the world is doing and giving as much as I am. Ask anyone who pays for that app every every month. I am doing the absolute most. It is so valuable. There's so much incredibleness on there from Ambitious Academy to my audiobook to my 12-week building an ambitious business program to my 28 day transformational program, a to eight P. And then I do live coaching on there all the time. It's incredible. The community of women are bar none, like you guys amazing. But one of the things that I like to do on Tuesdays is we do tower Tuesday over on the ambitious app, but I'm going to give you guys a little taste of these cards. So let me take out the cards. And what we're going to do is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call in our power posse. I talk a lot about this on, um, in the ambitious, the book. So the first thing you want to do is you want to just knock the bottom and the top of the cards, get out all the old energy. I'm going to shuffle these puppies up. And no matter if you're driving in your car, you're running on the treadmill, you're walking in a park with your baby, or you're just cleaning your house and you're listening to this podcast, you're getting a little bit of ambitious inspiration in your life. I want you just to set your intentions of what you're desiring to gain from this message from this Oracle card. So you may feel like you're in a fog right now. You may feel stagnant. You may feel overwhelmed, scared, fearful, angry, resentful. I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want you just to put out the intention to receive the appropriate message for the way that you're feeling so that you can just pull yourself out of that shit pit energy. Okay, so we're going to call in the power posse. So let's take a nice deep breath together. God, goddess, universal life force energy, all of our guardians and guides and loved ones who are no longer here on this three-dimensional earth plane and all of our ancestors who came before us and our family of galactic beings of light surround each and every one of us and fill up our vessels with your light and your love and your ancient wisdom. Help us receive the message that we desire today. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank you in advance. And so it is. Okay, so I'm going to go through the cards. I'm going to see what's tickling my fancy. What's tickling my fancy? Okay, what am I feeling here? I feel this one right here. Ooh, this is amazing. If you're watching this, this is the exile card. Okay, Um, I've never pulled this card out of this before. So let's see what's going on with the exile card. Okay. It says, there will be times when you are the exile searching for your belonging the same way the ugly duckling went from a place to place in hopes of a home. This can be a situational temporary sting or a long drawn out ache of longing as you seek out your true place. Either way, it's incredibly painful. To the witch, it is a form of initiation and needs to be greeted with respect. Your quest for connection is a holy one. Like a priestess from Avalon, you must greet the fog that shrouds your true home with your soul's song. Only the truest words from your most authentic self can break the spell and clear the fog, revealing the Isle of Apples, 
your place of belonging. The witch, woman in total control of herself, knows her soul's song comes from dropping down into the wound of her unbelonging. Now is the time to apprentice yourself to the lostness, to companion the longing, to belong by asking, what is the longing wanting from you? This isn't a time for self-improvement or development, cutting away or transforming what makes you feel like you don't fit. Rather, it's time to seek to ask the voice of the void what it is yearning to create in you. Yield to the ache, dear witch. The longing is forging a sanctuary for you if only you follow its voice. Ugh, such a good card. So I think that we as ambitious women are always in this constant state of getting better and self-improvement and doing the most and doing more and sending and evolving. And sometimes it's really about taking a step back and sitting in that feeling of, I don't belong. Where is my place in the world? Because I feel like so many of us, including myself, we don't really truly know sometimes like what our purpose is. But I think when you really truly step into your power and you find your purpose, and I teach this in my app, I teach this in my one-on-ones. This is something that I truly believe in the depths of my soul that we as ambitious women must step into our power power and find our voice so that we can truly know our purpose. Once you know what your purpose is and you go balls to the wall with your purpose, your whole life shifts and everything opens to a brand new technicolor world. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So sometimes we need to take a a break from the constant doing and we just need to be. And when we are in that energy of beingness, that's when God, the divine spirit can talk to us and say, hey, you might as well, you may want to look over here because this is where you're going to find the next step in your purposeful journey. And ambitious women are full of purpose. And if you are alive on this earth today, you are here for a greater reason. And it's your responsibility as the HBIC of your ambitious life to find that purpose and to step into that power and use your gifts and talents and your secret sauce that was given to you by God to elevate not only yourself, but in turn, elevate your community and elevate your surroundings and elevate your world. So we're going to get into it now. And I hope that you guys enjoyed that. So how to stop people pleasing once and for all? Well, I took a bunch of notes that I channeled this morning because I was really thinking about people pleasing and You know, over on my app, when I do my live coaching, we get so personal and we get so open and we just get so raw and so real. And I noticed today, and this is what sparked me to do this podcast. I noticed today when I was on my app and I was doing my live coaching and we were talking about going to the next level and what's keeping you small and why are you keeping your small? And everybody has this amazing purpose. And like I said before with the card, it's like it is up to us as ambitious women to find our purpose and to step into our power and to find our voices and use our voices for good. And I just feel like so many of us, including myself, sometimes we keep ourselves playing small because at the end of the day, we don't want to be judged. We don't want to be talked about. We don't want people to think that we're bad or we're not nice or we're not enough. And we We lean so hard into other people and what they think about us. And I'm telling you right now, that is what's keeping each and every one of us from showing up and standing in our power and being the purposeful, full, authentic, ambitious women that we were designed here to be. So in the Webster Dictionary, if you looked up people pleaser, a people pleaser is a person who has an emotional need to please others, often at the expense of their own desires and needs. When I'm saying that right now, how many of you out there in ambitious land, your bodies are just lighting up, your hair may be standing up on the back of your neck, and you're just like, yep, that's pretty much me. Well, it's not just you, my love. It's millions of other women all across the globe who are so deeply entrenched in this people-pleasing narrative. And they're on a ride that they cannot get off of. And it is so debilitating and it is so scary and it is keeping them small and it is keeping them from living their most ambitious life. 
And the people pleasing energy, the programming, the narrative actually starts usually during our childhood. People just don't wake up one day and go, I'm a fucking people pleaser. This is years of programming. This is years of um, implicit and explicit wants and whims and desires of our parents, our caregivers, um, our people of authority uh, that we have around us when we're children. And it usually happens when there's a codependent relationship with a caregiver or a parent that their whole entire happiness, like everything that makes them tick, everything that fills them up, their happiness actually depends on you bringing that to them. And your well-being actually depends because you're in this codependent, enmeshed relationship. Your well-being actually depends on if your parent or parents are happy with you and are happy in general. And as you guys know, I'm very open and honest about speaking about my childhood and my relationship with my mom and dad. And, you know, I talk a lot about this in my book, I've spoken about this a lot on other podcasts, but you know, my dad was an alcoholic when I was growing up and my mom, um, I think, you know, knowing what I know now, I think that my mom just, my mom and my dad, you know, they were high school sweethearts. And I think that they were very much programmed. Like you go to school and you graduate and you fall in love with your high school sweetheart and you guys just, you know, do the next thing. And then you have the kids and, you know, you have the business and you do the thing and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that's not true anymore. You don't have to do anything like that anymore. You don't have to follow that narrative, but that was how my mom and dad were programmed. And so, you know, when my dad was having his bouts of alcoholism, I think my mom depended on me so much for her joy and her happiness in life. So as a child, I would always want to be perfect. And I did never wanted to upset my mom. And I wanted my room to be clean. And I wanted to get good grades. And I wanted to be beautiful and smart and articulate. And I wanted to be good at sports and theater and all the things, you know, pageantry and all the things that I put myself into. I had to try to be the best because if I was the best and I was perfect, which no one is perfect, but as a child, you don't realize that if I was perfect, my mom would be happy and my dad's addiction wouldn't affect the family so much. And that is a lot of, that's a lot of responsibility on a young child. And I know a lot of you guys out there, um, you know, you feel very much the same way. And I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there in a bitches land that are shaking your heads right now, wherever you are saying, oh, that sounds very familiar. That sounds like my childhood growing up. So just so you know, you are not alone. You're definitely not alone. There's millions of people from all ages, walks of life, sexual orientation, creeds, religion, et cetera, that have had very similar codependent and mesh relationships with their parents for whatever reason. And that is how they became people pleasers. And then what happens is it's almost like we get stunted in that childhood part of our lives and that people pleasing those tendencies and that narrative and that script and those that mask that we have to wear just follows us throughout all of our lives. And then we get to a certain age, you know, I'm going to be 43 and we get to the certain age where we're just like, what the fuck are we doing? Like if you and I keep going on in this people pleaser energy, We're just going to be sad, angry, resentful, low vibrational frequency, broke ass hoes. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be any of those things. But I also know that no one's coming to save me. No one's going to force me to evolve. No one's going to force me to level up. I have to do it myself. And that's why I always say that ambitious women are not victims. We know that no one's coming to save us and we have to be our own best advocates and we have to educate ourselves. We have to know that when we were born, we were born with everything inside of ourselves already to be great, to be ambitious. We just have to go inside to those scary crevices that are, you know, nooks and crannies just filled with darkness and pull ourselves out so that we actually can stand in our power and become the HBICs of our lives, right? So like I said, that kind of energy is so much responsibility for a child and it just really just goes and bowls over into uh, our adult lives. And then we just become resentful, angry, 
old spinsters. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be that. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different ideas that I channeled to help you stop this narrative um, of people pleasing because it's not serving you. And actually, it's not serving the people that you are people pleasing because when you are a people pleaser, you're never truly your authentic self. You're always an actor or an actress. You're always wearing a mask. And people who are people pleasers, their number one core desire is to have real, raw, unabashed connection with people. And the truth of the matter is you will never really have those true connections with people because the person is connecting with someone who's not even a real, authentic version of themselves. So think about that. Let that kind of seep in, marinate in what I just said with that. So you're like, all I desire is people to love me and like me and accept me. And all I dream of in my life and my wants and my my aspirations and my goals in life is just to have these beautiful, authentic, connected relationships. And you're not because the person is connecting with a person that does not even really truly exist. You are almost like putting forward the representative, if you will. You know, like, I don't know if this happened to you when you were little, but when my mom would be like beating the shit out of me and like screaming at me when I was a little kid, you know, the phone would ring and my mother would be like, you and I'd be, like, ah, and I'd be getting whacked. And then all of a sudden the phone would ring. And my mom would go like, hello. And I'd be like, who the fuck is that? You were just beating me to an inch in my life. And now the fucking neighbor called to gossip about the other neighbor. And now you're like, Hello, you put on the phone representative operator voice and it's the same thing when we're becoming or we're standing in the power of being a people pleaser. You are being like the, the, the representative of the credit card company. It's like that is not truly who you are. So no wonder why you don't feel like you have any authentic, real, raw connection with anyone. Okay, so here's some things that I want you to really think about and I desire deeply for you to start to implement these ideas and these tools and these tricks and these techniques in your life to help you stop people pleasing because I'm going to tell you right now, I am a reformed people pleaser and even though I have worked so hard on deprogramming the old programming of people pleasing, I still slip back into people pleasing tendencies because it's so deeply ingrained in me from childhood, but I can pull myself out quicker and I can see myself doing the bad thing, the low vibrational frequency people pleasing um, actions easier and quicker and I can pull myself out faster. And that is growth. I'm not saying get rid of all your tendencies. It's going to happen overnight. You, you click your ruby slippers together and it's going to go away. Absolutely not. And I think that you guys here that listen to me, you're like, oh, Katie has her shit together. Of course, she's not a people pleaser. Um, I still do things like that. And I still want to kick myself in my boat booty hole because of it. I get so pissed at myself sometimes. I literally look in the mirror at myself and I'll be like, you fucking asshole. You did it again. And, you know, you just learn quicker. And that is growth. That is evolution. It's not getting rid of it altogether because most likely none of us never will totally get rid of things 100%. But it's to pull yourself out faster and recognize the low vibrational frequency things that you're doing that are keeping you small and keeping you in a not so ambitious place. All right, so the first thing is, and this is like really difficult, but I want you to treat yourself, treat yourself at the same level of someone who you actually people pleased. So if you actually showed up every day and you were like, I'm going to treat myself in a people pleasing way, the same way that I treat the people out in the outside world or in my family, or in my relationships, or my colleagues, or my coworkers, or the people that I, you know, work in the community with, or whatever, I'm going to treat myself the same, with the same level of love, and care, and consistency that I treat the people who I actually people please. Because could you imagine if you ask yourself this question, and you really did the things, so like when the questions were answered in your mind, and you maybe made a list, could you imagine if you showed up every day as someone who actually really truly treated themselves as if they loved themselves? <laughs> Can you fucking imagine showing up like that for yourself? So think about all the things that you do for people. 
in your life, right? You make them beautiful meals. You make sure that they're, if they're sick, they're taken care of. If they fuck up, you give them grace. You unconditionally love people. You help them, you know, achieve their dreams and their goals and their aspirations. You give them compliments, right? You give them love. You give them, you know, a safe place to fall. Could you imagine if you gave yourself, if you matched that energy with yourself, with yourself, (laughs) the same way that you do with other people that you're going out of your way to people, please, just because you want them to love you and like you. The fact of the matter is, is that most people who are people pleasers don't actually love and like themselves. So the first step to get yourself out of that people pleasing, you know, merry-go-round, the ride that you can't get off of is to show up for yourself with the same determination and support and unconditional love and tenacity as someone who actually loved themselves. Could you freaking imagine if you did that? Like how dope would that be? The next one, number two is to validate yourself and to know that your worth is not determined by what others think or say about you. You have to understand that every time you do that, every time that you lean on the validation of others and the permission of others and the kind words of others, you lose control of actually your true self and who you authentically really and rawly are. And you have to ask yourself, what is your truth? The truth of the matter is, is that you are a child of the most high God. You are a queen. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. Your ancestors have paid the price for you to be the HBIC of your life in this new world. And you are so fucking dumb that you actually lean on the validation and the permission of others telling you that you're good enough when you have to realize that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and know that you're good enough. Because if you can't do that, then it does not matter what anyone else in the world thinks or says about you if you don't love yourself and if you don't validate yourself and you don't give your own self the permission to be ambitious and great and wonderful and all the things. And to kind of pontificate on that, because this is like a little side, this is like a little like sidebar thing. And I think this is, I'm only saying this because I have a hard time and have had a hard time in the past with this. And I'm working on making this an easier thing for me to marinate in and swallow and, you know, digest is just think about all of the things in your life that you have made it through. All of the horrible, horrendous, scary, fearful, shit your fucking Lululemons situations that you have been through and you have rose above and you have conquered because of who you are at a cellular level. And I think that we as ambitious women have to really take a step back sometimes and look at how far we've come and what we'd what we've had to overcome. And what we've had to accomplish and create and ascend and evolve from to be the ambitious woman that we are today. Think about that. Really take us, maybe meditate on that after this podcast and say, wow, look at what I've gone through and look who I was. I always say to myself, and I say this to my clients all the time on my app, Your younger self at 21 years old would be so proud of the woman you are today. She would think that that woman is so fucking cool and so awesome. I think about that sometimes and I'm like, wow, the Katie of 2004 would be so fucking proud of the Katie in 2024. She would think that's a bad mama jamma. And I think that we have to think about that more often. Like, look how far we've come and look at what we've had to do to be the women that we are today. And give yourself a motherfucking pat on the shoulder, bitch, just to say, wow, look at how far I've come and look at the things that I've endured. 
And I'm telling you, if, if you're feeling like not so fresh and you're having a low moment and I have them every day, I try to think of like who I am and what I've been through and how much energy and intelligence and tenacity and determination and bravery and courage it has taken for me to muster up all of those things to be the woman that is here today, host of the Ambitious Podcast, author, multi-seven figure earner, healthy, wealthy, badass bitch that I am. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm, I want you all to say that for yourselves too, because you have survived the worst fucking days of your life and you're still here to, to talk about it. You're still here kicking. You should be really fucking proud of yourself because there's been a lot of people in the world that have taken other routes out so they didn't have to be ambitious. And I feel bad for those people and, I, and I'm and i sad for them and I mourn for them and I grieve for them because they didn't realize that the best years of their lives were in front of them, not behind them. And I say that to myself and I say that to my my community on the Ambitious app every day. Just think your best business, your biggest, most proudest days of your life are actually in front of you. They're not behind you. And how dope is that? The next thing, I talk about this all the time in my book. I talk about this all the time on my podcast. We got to say no. And we have to realize that no, saying no does not always elicit a bad outcome. We always think like, oh, if I say no to this thing, or if I say no to this experience or this person, they're going to think I'm bad. They're not going to like me. They're going to think less of me. And I actually have to say that's, I'm totally contrarian about that. I actually think that when you say no, and you really put some bodacious boundaries out there, people actually love you and they respect you more. And it gives them you know, the playbook so that they know how to show up around you. So saying no is one of the most powerful things that you can do as an ambitious woman. Remember, no is a complete sentence. I did a whole podcast a couple of years ago about no being a complete sentence. You know, you don't have to say no to someone and say, no, but I have to clean my goldfish's bowl that day. Or no, I have to, you know, go dig a ditch in the back of my house. And no, I can't because of, you don't have to give anyone an excuse. Just say, no, that doesn't work for me. You know, and if, and if you have a problem with saying no, you may want to give people, um, different options for you. So like, let's just say someone comes to you and says, Hey, um, I want to go to this restaurant with you, um, on Saturday night. And you may look at your schedule and you're going to say, all right, I have a really busy week this week. And I know that on Saturday night, I'm going to be a burnt ass hair. <laughs> okay. So I don't think that I'm going to be my best self when I go out with you. I don't think that I'm going to show up in my, you know, the, my greatest, most highest vibrational and frequency energy. So you may say, you know, that doesn't work for me, but how about we go get coffee on Tuesday at 1 PM at this little local coffee shop? You're not saying, no, I don't want to be your friend and I don't want to hang out with you, but you have to know yourself and you have to say to yourself, "Mm, I know I'm going to be a burnt out bitch on Saturday because I have a really busy week and Saturday is like my only day, let's just say for sake of conversation to like rejuvenate myself and give myself some downtime. And it's not that I don't want to hang out with this person, but I just think that dinner on Saturday is just way too much. But I know that on Tuesday, it would be such a beautiful break in the middle of my day to go have a cup of coffee or tea or lunch with a, with this person. So instead of like saying no and being like that person, you may compromise a little bit and say, I can't do this, but how about Tuesday we go do that? And you give them an alternative and then it puts the ball in their court and then they can choose to say, yeah, that sounds really great. Or, oh, I can't do Tuesday, but maybe Thursday. And then you look at your Thursday schedule and say, oh, that could work. And you still have the relationship because we as people pleasers, reformed people pleasers or people in uh, reformation of people pleasing, we desire the deepest desire in our hearts is to have raw, real unadulterated, loving connections with people, real connections with people. And when you just say no, because you're trying to be the badass bitch and you're not giving that person any alternatives, sooner or later, they're going to stop asking you to hang out with them. And then you're not going to have that person as your confidant or your friend anymore. And then you're going to feel really bad about yourself. And then you're going to go back to the people pleasing tendencies because that's actually easier for you. And that's when that's going to keep you safe, quote unquote, 
even though it's not going to. It's only fun for, for in the interim. It's not good for the long term. So saying no and, you know, making a complete sentence, not giving any kind of like song and dance. And then also, if you really do desire connections with the, with this person, then give them an alternative and everyone's happy, right? The next one, number four, taking time for yourself. We as people pleasers, we light ourselves on fire to keep everyone else around us warm. And at the end of the day, that makes me, I don't know how y'all feel, but that makes me very angry. It makes me resentful and I get super anxious and I get very depressed if I keep that kind of narrative flowing. So for me saying to myself, you know, I've given so much to my clients and so much to my family and so much to my friends. I'm going to take some time for myself and I'm going to carve out these, you know, on Instagram, I, I call them like my disassociating times. It's usually like when I lay on the couch with a, with my dog and a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And I watch, you know, like the real housewives, like just trash television where I can just like totally zone out and just be like mindless for that hour. To me, that's a great way for myself to kind of just like get out of my own head and rejuvenate or, you know, go to the gym and work out and listen to a great podcast or some really awesome playlist on your Spotify or take yourself out on a date or get a massage or go get a blowout at the hair salon or go meditate and do some breath work or, you know, go to an event. Like I have events all the time where the women will always say to me, I'm so glad that I took time out of my life to come here and do this self-defense course or do this yoga session or this breath work or this meditation or whatever event I'm having at Katie Boyd's Misfit Club. They could have done a thousand other things, but they chose to take time out of their lives to slow down and fill up their cup. Because when your cup is full, you are going to be the best mom, sister, daughter, friend, colleague, etc. that you can be. But when you are pouring from an empty cup that's coming from a place of ego and nothing that comes from a place of ego in that way is ever going to take you to the next level. It's not going to ever make you feel ambitious. And that's just the damn truth. So number four is take time for yourself, whatever that means to you, like fill up your own cup so that you can fill up the cup of others. Number five, know what you stand for and put it out there. In one of the chapters of my books, I talk about like, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for everything, right? Or anything. And a lot of people, they think I'm a fucking bitch, which is, yeah, it does. This is called the ambitious podcast. But they think I'm a bitch because I say things like, I don't like weddings. I don't like funerals. I don't like baby showers. I don't like those things. I don't go to those things. And it's not because I don't like babies and I don't like dead people and I don't like people getting married. I love all those people, but I just know, like, for example, and my mom called me the other day. She's like, oh, I'm going to this person's funeral. And I'm like, why do you do this to yourself? Why? She's like, oh, well, she was my friend. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, don't you want to remember that person as they were? You want to see them laying in a coffin? And for me, and I know a lot of people are like, wow, Katie, that's so cold blooded. I just know myself so deeply that I know that Number one, and I talk about this in my book, I get so nervous at dead people things that I turn into a psychopath and I get so nervous and I nervous laugh. I've got thrown out of churches and I've got thrown out of wakes and shit for this reason because I can't control myself. I just get, I get like bulbar affective disorder where I'm just like laughing and I'm making inappropriate jokes and I just like can't control my neurology because there's something about death and I don't know where it comes from. And maybe I should ask my spirit guides, like, where is this coming from? But it doesn't make it. I don't like it. Like some people like they think it's the most amazing thing to go and pay their respects to someone who passed away. I want to do it in my own way. And I want to do it in a different way. Same thing with weddings. It's like, I would rather just give you a beautiful gift and give you money in a card and send you like shower gifts and all that stuff. I, I don't want you to pay for me to eat your dry ass chicken. I don't, I can just make my own dry ass chicken at my own house and have a whole weekend to myself. Now, there are times where I make exceptions to go to people's weddings or go to, you know, certain things, but like mostly 99.9% .9 of the time, people don't even invite me because they know what I stand for because they listen to my podcast and I'm very open and honest about it. And they also have read my book. So they just know like we don't invite, you know, Katie to these things because she's not going to come anyway. I also have a huge group of friends that invite me to things and say, I know you're not going to come, but I want you to know how much I love you and how much we would love if you were there, but I wanted you not to feel left out, which I appreciate that so much. Same thing with 
um, you guys know that I don't celebrate, you know, holidays. And people will say to me, oh, I, I would love to have you stop by for Christmas or Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve or Easter or this thing or that thing. But I know you don't, I know you don't celebrate it, you know? And then they still invite me because they love me and they know that like I'm the HBIC of my life. I'm in control and I, I'll tell them yes or no. And I have no qualms about it, but you have to, you have to really know what you stand for because if you don't know what you stand for, that's how you can be easily manipulated because people pleasers are not strong mentally. They're not strong willed. They'll, they'll cave like a cheap tent from freaking Walmart any day of the week because they just want so bad for you to like them and love them and their worth, their self-worth and their self-esteem and self-confidence and validation comes from other people leaning on other people to tell them that they're good and that they're loved and they're funny and they're all these things. And I don't need anyone to tell me that shit. It took me years to get to this place though. So there is hope for you. If I can do it, anyone can do it, but know what you stand for, put it out there, have your rules, know what they are and stick to them, stick to your guns. The next thing, number six is know where you're going, know what your goals and your dreams and your aspirations are. I was talking about this the other day in my live coaching on my app where I was saying, you know, we talked about the wheel of life. We were talking about goal setting. We were talking about all these different things that I teach over um, on the app. And I was saying, my focus in 2024 is everything that I do has to support the person I'm becoming. So I have to ask myself, is the thing I'm about to do a high value action that's going to support my goals, my dreams, and my aspirations going forward in 2024 and beyond? And if the answer to the question is absolutely no, I'm not doing it. And I don't care how many sprinkles and, and sequins and fucking Swarovski crystals are encrusting this thing. I'm not fucking doing it because it's a waste of my time. And every time you do things that are not high value yielding actions that are supporting your hopes, dreams, goals, and aspirations, it's taking you further and further and further away from the person that you desire to be. And I always say, on the podcast, you've heard me probably say it a million times. I believe that hell is meeting the person that you could have been if you only tried, if you only stuck to your guns and you only did those high yielding value actions. So you got to know where you're going. You got to know your goals. You have to know the person that you're desiring to be. And then you have to do the actions that are in accordance with the person that you are becoming, period. Okay. You guys picking up what I'm putting down out there in ambitious land. I hope you are. The next thing, number seven, this is a hard one and it's taken me a long time and I've, and I've had to strategically do it over the years, but removing all toxicity from your life, especially people, you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. And if you look at your circle of friends and you're shaking your head going, why am I hanging out with these fucking bozos? Then you are not in a circle. You are in a cage and you are the only one that is going to liberate yourself and emancipate yourself and make yourself free to be the HBIC of your most ambitious life. Toxic people and the people that use you and manipulate you and make you dance like a monkey with symbols on the side of a road cranking an accordion, those are toxic people. You know who they are. I know that you're listening to me right now wherever you are and you have a fucking list of people's faces in your head that you know are toxic, that you know have no room in your ambitious life, but you keep making excuses for them and you keep allowing them to come back and rear their ugly little heads. And then you wonder why you're exhausted. You wonder why you're resentful. You wonder why you're angry all the time. And then you can't fucking get out of your own way. And you literally are jerking yourself off in the corner 24 seven. And you wonder why you feel like you're in a whirlpool and that you cannot pop yourself out of. It's because you are surrounding yourself with toxic, low vibrational people or things or places or narratives or old programming or old stories. And we have to liberate ourselves from these things. No one is coming to save you, bitch. Even the people who truly love you, they want the best for you. Even they're not coming to save you. No one can save you but you. We have to get out of this victim narrative. We have to get out of this victim mentality where we think like our fairy godmother is going to come down and bibbity bobbity boo us in the fucking tits and then we're going to be ambitious. It's not going to happen. 
We have to do the hard things. We have to get people out of our lives that are toxic. We have to upgrade our inner workings of our humans around us. If they're gossiping, if they're naysayers, if they're mediocre mias, there's a whole chapter of my book um, in Ambitious the Book that has like all the top 10 most toxic people that you need to remove from your life. So if you have read my book, go back to that chapter and reread that chapter. Um, if you're on my app, you can listen to it on audiobook. Go back and read that chapter and start really thinking about the people that are in your lives that are bringing this low vibrational frequency toxicity and fucking get rid of them. And if you can't get rid of them, because maybe you're married to them or they're, or they're your kid or they're maybe your parent or whatever, you got to be at the HBIC and you got to step up and say, hey, when you gossip or when you do these certain things, it makes me feel some sort of way. And I would really appreciate it if you don't talk to me about these people. I asked my mother. I have uh, a slew of people that I do not want to hear their names. They hurt me. They betrayed me. They've stolen from me. They've besmirched me. They have tried to ruin my name and ruin my life and ruin my business. And my mom, because she's just this old school Portuguese lady, and she's just like, oh, I saw her on Facebook the other day that show and show was doing such and such. And I'm like, Teresa, remember, I told you I don't want to hear about them. And she's like, oh, shit, that's right. Sorry, 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 sorry. And there's a part of me that I do want to hear about them. I want to hear that they're doing fucking horrible in their lives. I want to hear that they're, you know, getting divorced. I want to hear that they're fat. I want to, of course, there's a dark, mean, horrible, horrific streak in me that is selfishly wants to hear that the people that have hurt me are hurting too. That's human nature. But I'm always trying to keep it high. And I know that nothing good is going to come from that anyways. So why would I want to relish in someone else's downtrodden? life, you know? And my mom just knows, fuck, I'm sorry. And she'll apologize to me. And then we'll just move on to another thing. And that took me years. That took me years. Ask my mother. It took me years to get to that place. And I love my mother. She is my best friend. And I know that like, that's just something that we used to have in common where we used to just gossip about people. But then one day I woke up and I was like, this isn't healthy and it's keeping me small. And if I could take the energy that I use gossiping about these poor bitches that have nothing going for them that made really fucking bad decisions. If I re if I took that and I reallocated that energy to like making my life a better life, my life would be better. And that's what we should be focusing on. So removing all toxicity from your life. And I don't care what it is. It's people, it's places, it's things, it's experiences, it's narratives, it's whatever. Get rid of it. It's not helping you. <laughs> the next one, number eight, this is a toughie. Stop fucking saying sorry. We say sorry. I was watching something the other day. I don't remember what the hell it was, but someone was crying. Uh, it was like an interview and the woman was being interviewed and she was crying and she kept, every time she was teared up, she would look at the interview or interviewer and she would say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like apologizing for being emotional and apologizing for being sad. And I was like, bitch, I was like screaming at the TV. Stop fucking saying Sorry. And then what happened is I'll go to the grocery store and some old bitty with her 10 canisters of fancy feast and a loaf of wonder bread all hunched over in market basket, pushing her fucking carriage takes my fucking ankles out and hits me in the back of the legs in front of the fucking milk. And I look at her and I say, I'm sorry because I'm sorry is so ingrained in us as women to fucking apologize for breathing, apologizing for taking up space, apologizing for every friggin' move we make, every fart we take. And I'm telling you right now, that is doing something to us on a cellular level, on an energetic level. We don't fucking apologize. Now, if you hurt someone, you do something fucked up. Of course, apologize profusely. I'm just talking about apologizing for living or apologizing for being late. Like people sometimes for like my one-on-one -on -one sessions, my coaching sessions, they may be like five minutes late and they'll come in all disheveled and they'll be like fucking, they look like, you know, they just got a train road on them and they come into my office. They're like, oh my God, Katie, I'm so sorry. I'm late. I don't mean to disrespect you. Blah, blah, blah. And I'll always look at them and I'll say, babe, it's okay. You'll get here when God wants you to get here. Now I may not have time to do a full hour or two hours or three hours or whatever, to with you because you're 20, 30, 40 minutes late, but I'm going to do my best and I'm going to give you all of the time that I have allotted for this meeting. You don't have to apologize. Just, you know what? Say to the person, 
Thank you so much for waiting. I appreciate you so much for waiting for me. Doesn't that have a different vibrational frequency and a different connotation to it than saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just say, oh my God, thank you so much for waiting. I appreciate your time. You have no idea. It's a different vibrational frequency because if we want to live like the 1%, if we want to be the queens of our ambitious land, do you think a queen would be like late and she'd say, I'm sorry? No. Like look at the princess diaries, right? What did she say? Everyone else is early. We have to come with that energy. And I'm not saying to be an egomaniac and I'm not saying to, you know, shit on everyone else's time and energy. I'm saying like we have to show up in a different way. So stop fucking apologizing for just living. It's not the vibe, babe. It's not the fucking vibe. The next one, number nine is stop the perfectionism. So many of us say, oh, I didn't do the thing or, you know, whatever, because I'm a perfectionist. A perfectionism uh, is, being a perfectionist is actually a defense mechanism. If you peel the onion, what you should really actually say is, I'm not a perfectionist. I am a petrified bitch. I am so afraid. I'm afraid of fucking up. I'm afraid of being judged. I'm afraid of not being enough. I'm afraid of someone not liking me or loving me because I didn't do the thing the right way or the thing like the way that they wanted me to do it. And then when we are in that perfectionism loop, we end up being procrastinators because perfectionism and procrastination are twins. And you know that because if you're one of those people out there, they're like, oh, I'm just a perfectionist. Like I have to do everything has to be perfect. Before. Sometimes it's like, do it dirty, do it messy, do the thing is done is better than perfect because it will never be perfect. And there's always going to be someone out there like Dita Von Tees says, you know, uh, you could be the juiciest, ripest peach in all the orchard. And there's just going to be the one motherfucker that doesn't like a peach. And we have to be okay with that. So we got to stop the perfectionism. Because if you really, really think about perfectionism, the deepest core fear is not being good enough. And that is keeping us small. That is keeping us from uh, living out loud and living our best lives. And like I say, being the HBICs, being ambitious, right? And the last thing is we have to understand that selfish is selfless. If we always put ourselves first, like, what do I desire? What do I need? What do I want in these situations? We will never feel bad. We're never, ever, ever, ever going to feel bad. Because to me, people pleasing causes anxiety. People pleasing causes depression. People pleasing is a fear-based monstrosity. And, you know, there's three types of people pleasers. And I was listening to this psychiatrist talk the other day about people pleasing. And she says, you know, I see so many people that come into my office and there's three different types of ways that people pleasing shows itself and manifests. And there's the peppy people pleaser that is just like, oh my God, I would love to do that for you. And they're so overjoyed and they're overzealous and they're just so happy and they're so excited to do the thing, right? But the truth of the matter is is that it's not coming from a place of happiness and it's not coming from a place of service. It's actually coming from a place of fear and not enoughness. And it's like, will you like me now if I do this thing? Will you love me now if I do this thing? Will you like me more? Will you love me more? Can I, can I have a closer relationship to you? Can I have a more sense of raw and real and authentic connection if I do this thing for you? Because if I do this thing for you, you're going to like me more. You're going to love me more, right? Right? (laughs) It's like a dog and it's master. And none of you out there are dogs, bitch. You might be a bitch, but you ain't a dog. Okay. The next one is the pouty people pleaser. So there's the peppy people pleaser. Then there's the pouty people pleaser, which is I'm more like this where I'm like a resentful see you next Tuesday. Like if someone asked me to do something I'm like, oh my God, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, do you think I'm a slave? Do you think I'm like your like beck and call girl? Like, fuck you. And I'll still do it, but I'll be unhappy and resentful and angry and low vibe and just like, Row. and As you know, resentful, low vibrational frequency energy causes illness, sickness, and disease and unhappiness. 
And then you have the the in between people pleasers, which they're they're half peppy, they're half pouty. Usually they're peppy and then they pout. And again, they vacillate back and forth in between those two stances of people pleasing. And all three of those things are not helping. Okay. They're just not. And obviously there are benefits in the short term being a people pleaser, right? But at the end of the day, like I said before, it's a defense mechanism. And the truth is, is we are so desiring deeply to have this sense of raw, real, authentic, loving, reciprocative connection. And you're not connecting with anyone in any of those ways because if you're a people pleaser, the person, like I said before, is falling in love or liking or creating a relationship with someone who's not even real. And the truth of the matter is that all people pleasers at their core are just so worried about not being good enough. And the people pleasing is a defense mechanism so that they can avoid rejection. But I'm here to tell you that doing all the things that I just said, those top 10 things, it's going to be so uncomfortable for you in the short term, which is going to deter most of you out there in a bitches land from actually stopping this like horrible thing. But I promise you, if you just white knuckle it for the interim and you can get over the uncomfortableness in the short term, the long term benefits are going to outweigh friggin exponentially exponentially. Um, when it comes to how comfortable and how much self-esteem and self-confidence and self-awareness and real, raw, connective, loving, honest, truthful, supportive relationships. The more that I have boundaries and the more that I embody the ambitious woman to my clients and to my colleagues and to my coworkers and to my friends and my family members, the closer I feel to people, the more connected I feel to people and the more self-esteem I have because you cannot develop real self-confidence and real self-esteem because you're not truly yourself. And I know a lot of people pleasers, their core betrayal, uh, their core wound, like the wound that they're always trying to not feel is the betrayal wound. And the thing is, is like, yeah, okay. So you're people pleasing so that you don't become betrayed in the long run, but you're fucking betraying yourself. And what is more sad than someone who is betraying themselves, right? And you got to think about the fears around being like stopping the people pleasing rhetoric and the people pleasing narrative and the people pleasing story. You get what is the worst thing that can happen if you stop people pleasing? You know what's going to happen? You're going to well you're going to say to yourself, "Well, if I stop this people pleasing energy, then all the, all the people that I have a relationship with are not going to love me and they're not going to like me and I'm not going to have any friends." Okay, that may be true when you really start standing on your own two feet and saying, "You know, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be like this." And you start shifting Maybe those people will fall away, but the people who are going to come in and fall in love with you, your real, truthful, authentic, raw, vulnerable, amazing, beautiful, ambitious self, you're going to have real relationships because 90% of the relationships you have when you are in your people-pleasing era are not even real in the first place. So it's like you're afraid of losing something that's not even real anyways, right? That is from old programming. All of these things are from old, broken down narratives and programming. And that is up to us to set the boundaries and to put our feet down and ground ourselves and say, no more. I am going to be ambitious. I am going to be the HBIC. I am going to stop betraying myself. I am going to stop the resentful, low vibrational feelings that I feel so that I can live the rest of my life the best of my life. And I pinky swear promise you that when you really truly listen to me and you put these things into play and you stop being a people pleaser, your whole life is going to change. The wool, the veil is going to be pulled from over your eyes and you are going to see the world in a very different, more beautiful, more loving, more validating, more real, raw, authentic, and supportive place. I've been doing it recently. Um, I got rid of my phone. I was having all of these people text message me 24 seven. And it was never like, how are you? How, you know, how are you like Sheree from friggin' Real Housewives of Atlanta? How are you? How are you today? Like, 
no one ever asked me that. It was like, what can Katie do for me? What can Katie do for me? Or trauma dumping on me or bringing me like, like bad news all the time, you know? Or telling me what other people said, you know, and it's like what Jay-Z said, don't tell me what they said about me. Tell me why they were so comfortable to say it to you. And I got rid of my phone. I don't even have a phone anymore. I have a phone for emergencies and like three people have my number and that's it. And my life has changed so much because now all the people that were, you know, that had the privilege of having my cell phone number, they don't have it anymore. So they're going to go find someone else to use. They're going to find someone else to trauma dump on. They're going to find someone else to do their bidding. And if they really truly are my friend, they have other ways to get in touch with me or now they respect me even more and they know how valuable my time and my energy is. And now it's like, you know, you either work with me in a one-on-one coaching container on your business or, you know, leveling up, you join my app, and I, you're probably going to DM me on Instagram. And I'm not going to respond back to you because, again, it's a privilege. And when you act like things are a privilege around you, then people start treating you like it is a privilege to be in your life. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. I hope that this message really hit you at the core of your soul today. I hope that you think deeply about all the things that I said. I hope that I can be the lighthouse and I can be a pure embodiment of what being the HBIC is all about. I always want to be the greatest role model to my community out there. And if you think that this podcast will help another fellow people pleaser, please share it with them. You know, DM it to them text it to them, email it to them. If you do share it on your social media, don't forget to tag me at Katie Boyd Ambitious on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok at Katie Boyd Ambitious One. Uh, I just really desire deeply for people to wake up and and really heal the narrative of, of people pleasing. And I know that you can do it because I have already done it and I continue to do it on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Please share this with as many other ambitious ladies out there as you can. And in the meantime, don't forget to stay ambitious and I will see you next Tuesday.